One of the first things we learn about the world as children is the natural phenomenon of caterpillars turning into butterflies. But have you ever wondered just how this happens? The answer to this question lies within chemistry. It all starts out with the caterpillar, scientifically known as the larva. There are five stages in the life of the larva. These stages are called instars. Each of these instars lasts between one and three days, except for the fifth and final, which lasts three to five days. These instars occur between moltings. The chemical process which drives these moltings is the same as the process that activates pupitation. It all begins in the corpus allatum, located by the brain. This gland releases a hormone known as PTTH, which is sent down to the prothoracic gland. The prothoracic gland then releases a second hormone called ectosone. This is the molting hormone that causes the larva to change. But PTTH and ectosone don't work alone. There's a third hormone, the juvenile hormone, that plays a critical role in the development of the larva. It is the job of the juvenile hormone to ensure the order of the molts occurs properly. As the quantity of juvenile hormone present in the bloodstream lowers, the stages of the instars progress. After the fifth instar is complete, the level of the juvenile hormone has dropped so low that the larva now knows it is time to pupitate. Each of the larva cells undergo a process called apoptosis, otherwise known as programmed cell death. Essentially, the cells commit suicide to provide nutrition for the development of adult structures. Through a process as intrinsic as mitosis, the cell is broken down and fragmented. During this process, the normally hidden phospholipid phosphatidylserine is exposed and acts as a sort of eat-me signal. Phagocytes then engulf the fragment of the cell. Through apoptosis, the larva has effectively digested itself, becoming a sort of caterpillar soup. The only cells that had not undergone this process are known as imaginal discs. These nests of cells are what become the structures of the adult butterfly, such as the legs, the thorax, and the wings. The nutrients from the digested cells now allow for the creation of the butterfly. Once it has been constructed, it breaks out of its chrysalis, ready to take on the world in its new, beautiful form. Thank you all for watching. Huge shout out to Sir Vincent Brian Wigglesworth, the entomologist who discovered both PTTH and the juvenile hormone, for having the most amazing name and occupation combination I have ever heard. And another shout out to Mr. Beals, my chemistry teacher, for having me do this project. I've now learned things about butterflies that I never would have known if I hadn't done this. For even more awesome information on butterfly metamorphosis, check out my full report on his webpage chemistryislife.com.